Hi everyone, I'm going to talk about solving systems of equations using another method today called elimination. Uh, this is our third um, different method for solving system of equations. Uh, we've used a graphing method where we've tried to find where two lines intersect and we've uh, used a substitution method where we take the equations of the lines and rewrite them so that we have one equation solved for one variable and just plug it into the other one and go from there. Now uh, this third method is called elimination and it has four, uh, four basic steps. First step is to multiply, if necessary, one or both equations by a constant so at least one pair of like terms has the same or opposite coefficients. That might not make a lot of sense right now but when you see a couple of examples I think it'll become a lot more clear. Uh, next step is to add or subtract the equations to eliminate one of the variables. That's where we get the name elimination from the fact that we're eliminating one of the variables. And the decision to add or subtract is going to be based on, in step one, whether the like terms have the same or opposite coefficients. And it's going to turn out if they have the same coefficients, we'll subtract. If they're opposite, we'll add. Um, after step two, step three will leave us with just an equation that has one variable in it, which we can solve pretty easily. And then step four, we'll take our answer from step three, and we'll plug it into one of the original equations uh, in order to solve for the other variable. Now, when is this going to be valuable as a method? Well, some cases, like you can see here, uh, I have two equations, and none of the variables there are particularly easy to solve for. Uh, probably the easiest would be this x in the second equation, but even that would produce uh, both uh, two terms that have fractions in them, which would not be fun to deal with in terms of substitution. So I'd rather avoid that. Uh, the other uh, problem with graphing is you can see that these two lines intersect um, nowhere on the actual grid. So it's kind of hard to estimate. Is this three? Point one, is it 3.2? Is it 3 and a third? A little tough to tell for its x-coordinate there. So in that case, we're, we'd be better off using another method, uh, this new method called elimination. All right, so here's an example of a system of equations that we can use elimination to solve. Uh, we have 3x plus 2y equals 4, and 3x minus 2y equals negative 4. Now this is one of those examples where actually step one uh, can be skipped because our like terms uh, actually have really convenient coefficients. Uh, 3x and 3x here have the same coefficient and 2y and negative 2y have opposite coefficients. Now it's not always going to be the case that they will both line up like this. Um, when it does happen, you get the opportunity, you actually get the chance to choose whether you want to add or subtract depending on which one you want to eliminate. Uh, it's always easier to add than subtract, so why don't we try doing that? Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take 3x plus 2y equals 4, and 3x minus 2y equals negative 4. I'm just going to write them again so I have some space here. And uh, you're basically going to add both sides of the equation. Because they're lined up this way, you can just combine like terms by adding straight down. When we add straight down, we just combine the like terms that there are. So 3x plus 3x gives me 6x. 2y plus negative 2y, that's what's going to cancel out. Uh, that's what's being eliminated here, so I don't even need to write anything. Uh, that's just gone. Then I add the other side of the equation, and 4 plus negative 4. And this is not always going to happen, but in this case, it also actually kind of cancels out but because it's the only thing on that side of the equal sign, I've got to add a zero. Now, in order to get x by itself, I just simply divide each side by 6, and x equals 0 divided by 6, which is 0. Now, I'm certainly not quite finished yet. I need to take this value of x, and I'm going to plug it back into either one of my original equations. It doesn't matter which one. Uh, they're both equally convenient, so I'll just plug it into the first and I'm going to plug that in for x to give me 3 times 0 plus 2y equals 4. 3 times 0 is 0, so I don't even need to worry about that. I'm left with 2y equals 4, and divided by 2, I get y equals 2, which is going to combine with x equals 0 to give my final answer of 0, 2. Um, if I check this uh, ordered pair, 
0, 2 in both of my original equations, you'll see that it will work out in both cases. It satisfies both equations, which makes it a solution to this system. All right, so let's take a look at this problem, which is a little bit different because it's not nearly as convenient as the last one. You can see my first equation, negative 10x plus 3y equals 1. Second equation, negative 5x minus 6y equals 23. My like terms don't have the same number, uh, either exactly the same or opposite as their coefficients. So I have to choose one of these variables to eliminate. Uh, on the last example, I eliminated y, so now let's choose to eliminate x. In order to do that, I need to make these terms here either the same or opposite. And the way I can do that is I can multiply negative 5 by 2, and that will take me to negative 10. Uh, then I'll see what I can do from there. So I'm going to start off and multiply this entire second equation by 2. And when I do that, I get negative 10x minus 12y equals 46. And uh, underneath that, I'm just going to bring down uh, my original uh, first equation. I'm just going to write that underneath here. Negative 10x uh, plus 3y equals 1. Now, because what I'm looking to do here is eliminate the x's, I have to think about my adding or subtracting. Because the coefficients are exactly the same, in order to eliminate them, I'm going to have to subtract them. Now, subtracting is a little bit trickier than using addition because I have to make sure that I'm distributing my negative. So um, when I subtract here, I have to really be careful about what I do. Uh, in the first case, I've got negative 10x minus negative 10x, and by design, those cancel out. In the next set of terms, I've got negative 12y minus 3y. I have to pay attention to that negative there. That's going to give me negative 15y. And then on the other side, the equal sign, 46 minus 1. Once again, paying attention to that negative will lead me to equal 45. Now I have a one variable equation that I can solve by dividing by negative 15. I get y equals negative 3. So now we actually have to solve for x, and we have a lot of options. We can plug into either one of my original equations, or if I prefer, I can plug into the one that I generated by multiplying by 2. It doesn't really make a difference, uh, so I'm going to choose to plug it back into the very top equation. Uh, again, it doesn't really matter, but it's just you have some options here. So I'm going to take my original equation, negative 10x plus 3y equals 1, and replace the y with negative 3 and see what happens. Uh, 3 times negative 3 is a negative 9. Uh, I'm going to add 9 to each side. I'm going to get negative 10x equals 10. Dividing by negative 10 is going to leave me with x equals negative 1. Combine the two of these values to get my ordered pair of negative 1, negative 3, which you can plug back into your original uh, just to make sure that it will indeed work. And in this case, it certainly does. Uh, if I take the negative 1, negative 3 and plug it into my first equation, uh, negative 1 for x and negative 3 for y, x and y, uh, that's going to give me 10 plus negative 9, or 10 minus 9, which equals 1. That's what I want. And if I plug it into my second equation, negative 1 for x, negative 3 for y, I'm going to get 5 plus 18, which will equal 23. Uh, and because then negative 1, negative 3 is a solution to both the first and the second equation, uh, it's a solution to the entire system solved by elimination. All right, so let's take a quick look at a word problem that we can use elimination to solve. Uh, business with two locations by seven large delivery vans, like this, and five small delivery vans. Now, location A receives five large vans and two small vans for a total cost of $235,000. Location B receives two large vans and three small vans for a total cost of $160,000. What is the cost of each type of van? So in order to figure out the cost of each type of van, since that's what we're looking for, we need variables in order to set up equations and go from there. There's no reason to, we can't be somewhat clever here and 
say that the cost of each small van is going to be S dollars and the cost of each large van is going to be L dollars. Now, just be careful when you're writing this that your S's and your L's don't look too much like 5's and 1's, but as long as you're careful, you should be in good shape. Now, we're going to use each of these two sentences here to write an equation. Location A receives five large vans and two small vans for a total cost of $235,000. That means five large vans is 5L, and two small vans means plus 2S for a total cost of 235000 means equals 235000 Second sentence that we're going to use to write our equation is location B receives two large vans and three small vans for the total cost of $160,000. So that's going to be two large vans is 2L, three sm and three small vans is plus 3S. For our total cost of $160,000 means equals $160,000. So now our two equations are 5L plus 2S equals 235,000 and 2L plus 3S equals 160,000. So now we are ready to do some elimination. We just have to choose our target. We've got four different options um, here. We've got, we've got different things here to look at and we can choose to eliminate either the L's or the S's. Um, the 5 and 2 and the 2 and 3 it doesn't work out super conveniently because neither one is a multiple of the other so we're actually going to have to be multiplying both uh, equations by something that doesn't make a difference so I'm going to multiply uh, my equations by something to eliminate the S's and uh, I'm going to look and say how do I make 2S and 3S what do they have uh, as a common multiple I could end up with 6 if I multiply the first one by 3 I'm going to multiply the first one by 3, and it's going to give me 15L plus 6S equals, and then this is uh, probably just using a calculator for this one, do uh, 235,000 uh, times 3, and you're going to get 705,000. It's a big number, but it'll, it'll work out in the end. Uh, in order to cancel out the S, I'm going to need to make the other one uh, also have 6s involved, so I'll do that by multiplying by 2, which is going to bring me to 4l plus 6s equals, again, multiplication here, 160,000 times 2 is 320,000. Now to cancel out the s's, because the 6s and 6s are identical, I'll use subtraction. It's the only way that I'm going to be able to get them to reduce. Uh, so I make sure that I keep track of everything here. 15L minus 4L is 11L. 6S minus 6S, again by design, cancels out. And 705,000 minus 320,000, using a quick calculation on a calculator most likely, is going to give us a value of 385,000. Big number, but let's see what happens when we divide by 11. And ever so conveniently, get 35,000. And so the cost of the large van is $35,000. So my expectation is definitely that the small van would cost less, but we'll have to see exactly how that is. What we're going to do is we're going to take our value of L and we're going to go plug it back into one of our original equations. It doesn't matter which one. Uh, I'll pick the one with the smaller numbers just because it uh, might be a little bit more convenient. So I'll do 2 times 35,000 plus 3S equals 160,000. 2 times 35,000 is 70,000 plus 3S equals 160,000. Subtracting 70,000 from each side, I get 3s equals uh, 90,000. And finally, dividing by 3, I get my value for s, which is 30,000. Uh, and so indeed, yes, this small van uh, does cost less than my 
large van. It's only thirty thousand uh, dollars per uh, per small van. And this is because it's a word problem. We're not going to answer it in a uh, in order to pair. We're going to give it as a sentence for an answer. So we would say something like the large vans cost thirty five thousand dollars each, and the small vans cost thirty thousand dollars each. And we could check that information with our two examples from location A and location B, and that should give us the total of $235,000 for location A and $160,000 for location B. Uh, so I hope that is very clear, and that's how you use elimination to solve a word problem that involves a system of equations.